So Roblox skinned avatars are essentially a mesh with an applied armature that allows for mesh deformation. And I will be covering that as well as animating the avatar. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get into the video. So I already have an avatar made and I'm actually just going to remove the armature as well as hide this. This is just like a random mesh that I made really quickly for the tutorial. But the avatar can be basically just anything, but the process is the same. This could even be a cylinder with legs and a head, but the main thing that the character needs right now is going to be the armature, that we add by pressing on Shift A and then selecting the armature object right here. Now this is going to create a root bone, as well as the armature object in the hierarchy right here. And now we usually just want to position this one, around the center of our character. In my case it's going to be right here, but I'm also just going to go to the object data properties and then under viewport display select in front. So this is just going to be easier to see. And now you can think of these bones as, well, actual bones that have control over an area of the character's body. For example, this one is going to have influence right here. But if I select the tip of the bone and then just extrude it, this is going to add another bone where this one is going to have influence over this area next to it. And then we basically just repeat the process for the whole character. Now it's also good practice to rename these bones. If I expand the hierarchy right here, the name of the starting bone should be the root bone. Then the following one could be something like torso. Then this one, since it's positioned at the neck, should just be called neck. And then this one, which is going to control the character's head, is going to be called head. And now there is two ways of extruding the bones to the character's arms. In my case, it's going to be the pose, but you could basically just extrude it from, let's say, this point to go downwards like this to the end of the paw, and then repeat the same for the other side. But another way, is by duplicating one of these bones. And now you can see that there is a dashed line. This means that this bone is parented right here. And now if you don't see this, that means the bone doesn't have a parent. So I'm going to clear it, and this would be the same effect. And now to parent this bone in the hierarchy, we need to firstly select this, and then select another bone, and then press on Ctrl and T. And we want to select the Keep Offset option. And now it's going to create the dashed lines, and this means that it's parented properly. So now I'm just going to position it basically on the paw. So from the center I can basically just duplicate this, move it by minus 0.3, then move this one by 0.3, and just move the ending points to match the paw's position. And then I can basically just duplicate these and position them accordingly. And now I basically just want to do the same for the tail. So duplicate this bone. And this time it doesn't have the parent. So I just want to select the root bone and press on Ctrl and P again. Then just select the offset option. And I'm just going to make three bones for the tail. And now I'm just going to finish changing the names of these bones. So this is the whole hierarchy right here. And now we just need to apply the armature to the character. By selecting the character first, then selecting the armature while holding shift, and then pressing on Ctrl and P. And now if you don't see the options with the armature deform, this means that you selected something incorrectly. If I go to the armature then the mesh and do the same, I'm not going to have these options. So again you want to select the object, then the armature, and press on Ctrl and P. And here you just want to select the option with automatic weights. And now the character mesh is going to be under the armature object, and this just means that it's parented. So our character is basically ready to go, and there is another thing to check if everything is set properly, and is the option of the weight paints. And this is an optional step basically if your mesh is like deforming weirdly, or maybe if one bone should move a part of a character's mesh. Now you can see that there is some red area right here, and that's because if I go to the object data properties, and in the vertex groups I have the tail free bone selected. And what this allows me to do is to basically just check what influence bones have over an area. 
Like this is basically fine for a character like this, except you can see a little bit of weight paint right here. And now how can we get rid of basically just this line right here? We can either just change the weight of the brush to zero and just go over this area like this. Or alternatively, go back to the edit mode, select the vertices that we don't want to deform, and then draws while having the right one selected, press on remove. Now this area is going to be gone from the weight paint. And then to fix something like this, because this could deform a bit weirdly, we can select the smear tool and just go over it like so. And now we could also do a last check by selecting the armature and going into the pose mode. Now if I select one of the bones and just try to rotate it, you can basically just see that it's deforming the character. So now this guy is basically just rigged properly. And now there is few things that I need to mention about exporting the model. One of them is going to be the scale, and another thing I need to actually mention in Roblox Studio. And now another really important thing is that the character has to be positioned in the center's origin. That's where Roblox Studio is going to create the humanoid's root part. So now it's going to be around this area right here, but if let's say this character was a little bit higher, the root part would basically just be like this. So before exporting, make sure that it's positioned in the center of the scene. But to export the model, if you just need to select it, then select the armature, go into file, then export, and then select the FBX format. And from the menu on the right, we just want to select selected objects, and then change the scale. Now the scale is going to be really important because if the mesh is too big and then you scale it down in studio, there is going to be artifacts happening with the armature deform. So we want to change the scale to something low like from 0.01 to 0.05. Then we want to select the apply transforms. From the geometry, if you have any modifiers, you want to select this option to apply them. And from the armature, we want to select only deform bones and deselect the add leaf bones option. And if you made any animations in Blender, the Bake Animations option is going to export the animation to the FBX file with the character. But then we just want to select Export FBX. And here I'm just going to do something really quickly. Since I don't really have a proper texture for this avatar, I'm just going to select these two rings, then just press on Mesh, Separate and the Selection. So now these are going to be a different mesh, and I'm just going to name these ones Ice. And now the weight paint on this is going to work properly like it was working on the cat model. If I go to the weight paint and the head, you can see that it has a red area right here, like it had on the head. But then from Studio, we want to set the import 3D and then navigate to our file. And this is the thing that I wanted to mention. Now, the orientation of the character is incorrect, and this is going to make it so the humanoid's root part is going to be facing this corner where my mouse is pointing. So you might either need to change this manually, use a plugin for that, or just go back to Blender and rotate the character with the armature by minus 90 degrees in the right direction. And right now I have the cut mesh, the armature, and the eyes. And now if you don't see the armature right here, this means that you exported it incorrectly. So just double check if you did anything wrong. But if you did, let's move to the options, and I'm just going to deselect this one, and go to the rig general. Now this import 3D is already going to know that the rig type is going to be custom, but if it didn't do that, make sure you have the custom selected. And then just press on import. And now this is the thing that I mentioned about the humanoid's root part, and that's why it had to be centered in the scene's origin. And also for the model scale, now if the root part is anything lower than I believe 0.1, it might cause the problems with the armature's deformation. But if the size is right, you can just scale the model down. But also keep in note that the scale of the humanoid's root part might be a little bit too low, so again either change the scale in Blender, or use a plugin to help you resize it. Now I'm going to remove the initial poses and the animation controller and just change the material of the cut to be neon. Now just make this one black and then set these eyes to be like orange. So we just have our guy right here. And now if you imported the character as a singular mesh, it's just going to have the mesh part with all of the bones that the root part has. So you are going to have to set the humanoid's root part manually. And you will just simply add a part positioned at the center of the character, name it humanoid root part and just either add a motor 6D or just weld the model to the part. But now while having this guy right here, we can rename the root part to actually be the humanized root part. 
And now the cut mesh and the eyes are already connected. So now to actually change this guy into a playable character, we first need to add a humanoid. And I'm going to change the name of the group of this character to the starter character. Now this will allow me to move it into the starter player, and this is going to be the starter character for this place. So if I do a playtest, you can see that I changed to the cut model, but there is few things that we actually need to fix. One of them is going to be the collision on the eyes and the cut mesh. So I just disable it. And I'm just going to scale this one a little bit lower. And now you can see that we are able to walk, but the character is in the ground. And that's because of the humanoid's hip height property. So right now it's set to 0, and if I change it to let's say 2, you can see that our character went above the ground. But this is a little bit too high, so I'm going to change it to like 1.8. And that's low, so maybe like 1.9. And this seems about right. And now we need to do the same on the property of the starter character. So well, now we got the basics done, and you also need to do some animating. And the easiest way is to just copy the animate script from our own character. But also make sure that the character is going to be in R15, since the animate script is different from the R6 one, and the R6 might not fully work with the skinned avatars. So from the playtest, just select the script from your character, then just copy by Ctrl and C, stop the playtest and paste it in. And then you need to move this script into the starter character scripts. And now to change the animation we previously need to have it, so I'm just going to do a quick animation. And here I have the keyframes for the basic position, and since this is going to be a walk animation, I just want to just mess around a little bit with the legs. So while having them at this position, I want to copy the keyframes, and just paste them in somewhere else. And now the length of 1 second will be alright for a walking animation. So I'm just going to set it to looping, and then I'm just going to make something really quickly. And well, here is the walking animation, and the next thing we need to do is set the priority by going into the three dots and then selecting the set animation priority. Now, since this is a walking animation, the priority is going to be set to movement. Then I just want to save it and publish the animation onto Roblox. Now, this is just going to be a catwalk animation. Press it on save and then copy the animation ID from right here. And once I have the animation, I want to go back to the animate script, expand it, and then go to the value that says run. And from the run animation instance, I just basically want to change the ID. And now if I put this character as a starter character into the starter player, it's going to have the walking animation if I try to basically walk right here. So you can see that, well, the cat is walking. And also on the side note, do you guys know that I make UGC items? You can go check them out, the link is going to be in the description, but anyways, back to the video. Now you can also change this at runtime, if you had let's say a different character that you wanted to load. If I were to go to the run, then the run anim, then remove the ID. So it's just giving a bunch of errors right now, and that's because I removed the animation ID and didn't place a different one. So I'm just going to make a different animation, for example it's going to be something like a jump animation. where this animation needs to actually not loop, and the animation priority is also going to be movement. Or this one could also be set to action. So this one is going to be a cut jump animation, where again I'm going to copy the ID, and from the animate script I'm going to go to the jump and change the ID right here. 
Then again, starter character with a playtest. And now if I jump, the character is going to actually do the jump animation. Like this. And also, if I change the run animation again to the idea of the animation that I just made on this character and try to walk, it's actually just going to play the other animation. So I can just change them at runtime by referring to the animate script, then the run instance, then the animation instance, and the animation ID property. But yeah, that's basically how you make the custom skinned avatars with animations. But that's going to be everything for today. So as usually, very like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you for watching, and see you guys.